Hey guys, hope you're ready to learn about how decisions are made in a perfectly competitive market and are ready to get back to the topic of perfect competition. So in the previous video, we talked about marginal revenue, average revenue, total revenue in relation to when a, when a producer sells something, how much revenue are they going to get? So make sure you're comfortable with all of those three concepts. And one very important conclusion in a perfectly competitive market, which is price equals MR, marginal revenue. So make sure you understand that before we proceed with this video. So now we're going to talk about how much are they going to produce. So we know the produce, you know, our producer baker is going to be producing some cakes and hopefully they're going to be selling it to their customers. So based on this market that we are producing in, how do we know the optimal quantity to produce? We don't just decide to produce whatever we want to. We look at the market conditions and decide the optimal quantity to produce in. So that's what we are going to be talking about today. So we know the goal of a producer is to maximize profit. Right, that's the goal, that's the reason we produce things is because we want to maximize the difference between revenue and costs. So profit is total revenue minus total cost. You know total revenue is P times Q. You know what total costs are based on the previous chapter. Everything we talked about in the previous chapter has to do with total costs. So the difference between the two gives us the profit that a producer is going to be earning. So that's you know, what I just said. It's the amount of firm received by selling and it's the cost that they'd incur when they buy those inputs. So our baker has to buy you know, ovens, coffee machines, they have to hire labor, they have to get those ingredients, they have to pay for their lease, all of those are costs. Now we're gonna talk about revenue uh, in this chapter and how much they can sell uh, moving forward with this chapter. All right, so profit maximization is total revenue minus total cost. To understand how much they should produce to maximize their profit, we have to think at the margin. Again, we're gonna assume our baker said who's gonna be thinking at the margin. Think about MR and MC. So if we increase quantity by a unit, Think about what MR represents and what MC represents. MR means how much revenue rises by if I produce one more unit. MC measures how much costs rises by when I produce that one more unit. So when you're deciding, shall I bake one more cake to sell it, if your MR is more than your MC, which means when you produce that cake, the revenue you generate by selling it is more than the cost you incur to produce it, you should definitely produce that quantity. But if on the other hand, MR is less than MC, then you should reduce the quantity that you want to produce to raise profits. So the relationship between MR and MC is very important, and this just is true for every producer, whether you're in perfect competition or any other market. But make sure you understand that before you proceed in this, in this video. All right, so I'm gonna propose three propositions, and we'll talk about the first two in this video, and then we'll talk about the third one in the next video. All right, so the first one says the price equals marginal cost at the optimal quantity. Again, everything here is in relation to perfect competition. So when the producer decides how much to produce, at that quantity, price is going to equal MC. And the second one is that MC cannot be decreasing at that optimal quantity. So I'm going to look, you know, draw the graph and, and show you uh, both of those properties on the graph. And the third one I'm going to just ignore for right now, and we'll get back to the, uh, that point in the next video. All right, so this is the same example from the previous chapter where we looked at marginal costs. I'm not going to cover marginal costs in detail in this video. If you want to review, go click on the pop-up on the top right of your screen and review that chapter before you can continue here. So we have total costs, we have marginal costs, which is change in TC divided by change in quantity. And as you remember from the previous chapters, we know that MC is U-shaped. It goes down for low levels of quantity due to increasing marginal product of labor. And then eventually, the law of diminishing returns sets in, which says that every producer is going to be subject to increasing uh, marginal costs and also average costs, uh, if you remember from the previous chapter. All right, so let me uh, look at this graph. So you have costs on the vertical axis, you have quantity on the x-axis. So this is your marginal cost. So this graph here represents marginal cost. Let me, you know that for perfect competition, price equals marginal revenue, right? So you know that from uh, the last video as well. Now, if this producer takes price to be given to them, right? So let's say the market price is 50, $50. So we know that this producer's price and marginal revenue are this. They cannot charge any price above 50, nor they can, will they charge any price below 50. That you should review the previous video for to know that point. Now the goal is to see what quantity are they going to produce. That's the most important question any producer has to answer is how much should I produce? So let's look at all the different scenarios. If you are producing, let's say, five units, what that means is for to produce that fifth unit, your marginal cost is more than your price or marginal revenue, right? So to produce that fifth unit, it's costing you more than you're generating in revenue. So you should not produce the fifth unit. You should reduce your production from five units. 
Now let's look at the another side. If you're producing three units, now the price that you're able to charge, which is 50 at that quantity, is more than it's costing you. So if the revenue or the price you're able to charge is more than what it's costing you to produce it, you should increase production. So if you're producing too much, in this case five, you reduce production. If you're producing three, you should increase production. And our sweet spot or the optimal quantity is a point where this producer is producing at a unit where your price equals marginal cost, which means the extra cost that you have to incur to make that commodity, in this case baked good, equals the price you're able to sell that good for in the market. So that's a very important conclusion, uh, is that if you're producing at the optimal quantity, price is going to equal marginal cost in perfect competition. Now the second proposition was that this is also a point where price equals marginal cost. And hopefully you noticed that while I was talking about the remaining, the other parts of this uh, graph. You would not produce at a point, at a quantity, where MC is decreasing. So now let's look at that part. Now if you look at this graph, you see that if you, if we were producing at this quantity, if you increase production, your costs are going down, your price remains the same. So to produce one more unit, you're going to get the same price when you sell the good, but your costs are going down. So obviously your profits will increase if you do that. So this is not an optimal quantity to produce at. So this is where in a perfectly competitive market, your producer will produce at a quantity where price equals marginal cost. So hopefully you're clear on the first two points from, uh, you know, fr from the three propositions that I made. Uh, and then the third one we'll get to in the next video. So just to do a numerical example here, you have total revenue, P times Q, you have total cost that's given to you, your profits, MC, you should know how to calculate as well. Uh, you know, profits is just total revenue minus total cost. Marginal cost is change in total cost divided by change in Q. So I'll just do one as an example. When you go from one to two, your costs change by uh, six and your quantity changes by one, so your marginal cost is six. So hopefully you remember that. And profits are just total revenue minus total cost. So to see what your optimal quantity is, we're gonna look at the relationship between MR and MC. And the last column tells you the difference between MR and MC, right? So you know MR and MC from here, that tells you the difference. So if you're producing at a quantity where MR is more than MC, so for example, if you're producing one unit, right, your MR is more than MC, which means if you produce more, you will get more revenue than what it's costing you. So obviously you should increase production. Conversely, if you're producing at a quantity, let's say five, where MC is more than MR, now it's costing you more to produce the good than you can sell it for, you should not do that, right? You should reduce production, and the optimal quantity is the point where MR equals MC, and you can see your profits are maximized, uh, right, at that point, and you will, in this scenario, produce four units, because if you produce four units, you're maximizing the profits you can earn. And so hopefully you are clear on how to determine the optimal quantity in a perfectly competitive market. They're able to produce a quantity, not able, they would, they will produce at a quantity where price equals marginal cost. You should know that on the graph. Make sure you review the previous chapter if you're not comfortable with drawing marginal cost. And then also be able to measure profits numerically and figure out that optimal point where they should produce. So hopefully you're clear on this. And now in the next video, we'll talk about how the decision for a producer changes if they move from short run to long run.